Hi everybody, Logan here, and today I am making a recipe from Thomas Keller's book, Ad Hoc at Home. Now you might be wondering, of all the recipes in this book, which one would Logan choose? Well, the answer is his caramelized sea scallop recipe. Now I chose this one because I think it's really important to teach you guys some basics. And cooking a scallop and pan-searing it has to be one of the most basic things around. And for me, I think that if you can master these fundamental basics of pan searing a scallop and doing it perfectly and exquisitely, you are on the right track to becoming a really good chef. And so, let's get started here. The first thing Chef Keller has us do is to start with a brine. Now, brining scallops seems pretty bizarre. Uh, this, this, is, this is another reason why this recipe really piqued my interest. Because I brine things like turkeys, I brine things like chicken and some other poultry, but you know, I never brine my seafood. Never brine any fish, shrimp, no, 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 no. So, you know, I thought this has to be pretty interesting. If Thomas Keller is telling us that we should brine our scallop, then there has to be something to find out. So that's kind of why I wanted to try this. So we're gonna start with a cup of boiling water here, and then I have half a cup of salt. Now I'm using large flake kosher, I like kosher, and um, right in, and then I'm just gonna give that a little, little stir. Um, we're gonna try and see how much of the salt we can get to dissolve here, because I thought more of it would dissolve, but it looks like it's not really, not really going. I guess I'll give it a minute. So, you know, stuff like this takes time. You know, you're just kind of watching it, kind of like thing. So we're starting with this brine, and um, then we're gonna add this. Um, salt mixture here into this um, four cups of cold water. Now, um, this is just kind of really interesting. And then we're gonna add in our scallops. Now here are our scallops here. The scallops I have here are very special. These are from a very good friend of mine, Chef Ben Smith over at Tsunami in Memphis, Tennessee. He's known for his seafood and he hooked me up with these fabulous U10 scallops. Now Chef Keller calls for U7 scallops which means that there are seven scallops to a pound. These are new tens, 10 scallops to the pound. But they're still much better than what I could get at my local grocery store, which would be something more along the lines of a U25, where they're generally thinner, smaller, and pumped with more solution. Um, also, these are incredibly fresh. Like, they just, they just make me want to cry. I love these. Mm -hmm. And, you know, ah, there we go. We have gotten it to dissolve, so I'm gonna pour it into the cool water and a lot. Boom. And now I'm going to add in our scallops. <laughs> Chef Keller has us down. Uh, just check the temp here. It's not too warm. Just like a perfect bath. Oh. So I'm going to add in our scallops here. I've got five scallops. I love scallops. Now, in brining these, these are also going to wash them off and kind of, you know, help clean them a little bit. We're going to get some of the slimy, scallopy stuff off of them by having them be in the water. Normally, I just wash my scallops to do this, but the brine will effectively do the same thing. Plus, we're going to wash them after the brine as well. So, we're going to wait 10 minutes. And the reason why Thomas Keller is having us do this whole brine scallop thing is to season them all the way through. And this is kind of interesting because most of the time I just season the outside once they're done, uh, a little bit before, a little bit after, during the pan sear. But getting a seasoning and a salinity all the way through the entire scallop um, seems very interesting. So we're going to wait our 10 minutes here. I'm going to put on my music, do some little walking, um, you know, have a little bit of fun. And uh, I'll see you guys when these are done. All right, everybody. So it's been 10 minutes, and that means that we can move on to the next step, which is draining these sea scallops. So I'm going to take these back to the sink. I'm going to use my handy dandy fish spatula, wonderful tool, and we can get started on drying the scallops.
There's also a slight change in the smell of the scallop. The salinity has a kind of maturified the sweetness of the scallop. You know, it tastes, it, well, I can't tell you how it tastes because it takes quite a bit, <laughs> but it smells um, much more um, mature and um, I'm trying to get this to you the right way. Much cleaner in a way, like you can give it a smell and you can really see like that a little bit of the raw scallop funk has been taken off. That I kind of edged to the, to the smell of a raw scallop um, isn't quite there. It's much more rounded off. Like you get you get scallop and then you get salt and you get this clean smell of like the salty brine, which is pretty interesting. Now, I'm going to dry my scallops um, with a paper towel, you know. You're doing this um, mainly because you want to keep them really dry so they get a good sear. Um, wet scallops don't sear as well as dry ones, and that's generally true for most meats and everything else, and fish. You know, you want to make sure to pat it dry. Alright, so I have them dry now, and another thing that I wanted to bring up with these scallops is that they also feel firmer. Um, this is kind of an interesting feeling because you can see the squish in the scallop is a lot less than before. You know, they're, they're firmer, there's more, um, they're tighter, and uh, they also smell very clean, kind of salty, and uh, it's a very interesting change that I haven't noticed before with the scallop. I've noticed that when I've cooked them, that, you know, they, they, they crisp up and stuff, <laughs> they cook, but um, I've never really noticed that the muscle just kind of firms with the um, sal salinity, which is... Kind of interesting. Now I'm going to get started on cooking them. I've got my pan here and I've got my butter going in. This is supposed to be pretty hot. So, there we go. Let's see. Now I'm going to do a couple first. I don't, I don't want to overcrowd the pan. I'm going to give these scallops the room that they deserve and you know always be respectful to your food when you're cooking it. You know they'll respect you more when you Bottom and bottom. You know, you just gotta get her in the Zen headspace with it. So, go add a little bit more butter. Now, I've also I've heard a lot of tricks about cooking scallops. You know, I've heard the trick of putting sugar on the edges and cooking them that way, which uh, I don't know. It wasn't really for me, but we're gonna see how the brine works today. You know, it's really intriguing because I've never tried seafood. Now, Chef Keller says not to mess with them too much in the recipe, and uh, you know, I'm just gonna let them do their thing. I think I figured out how to describe it. They smell more oceany, less scallopy. And, um, you know, I just kind of came to that realization right now because, you know, there's an ocean smell of salt water that I think is the best way to describe how the scallops smell. They smell like sweet salt water, which is really the best way to describe them. They don't really smell they smell kind of like scallops, but they don't really smell exactly like scallops. Hmm. Anyway. Now another thing is that when you're cooking your new 25 scallops that you can normally get at the grocery store, they're going to be thinner. So you have to adjust for that by not, not brining them as long and uh, not cooking them as long as well. You know, these U10s are pretty sizable. They're, 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 pretty, they're, they're pretty chunky um, in comparison to the thinner ones that I'm normally able to get and probably the ones that you're going to be using. So that's another thing that you have to keep in mind with is that the, um, the thickness of your scallop is important in getting to the, the brining of the seasoning of the entire scallop and the cooking. So um, these are going to take 
longer or thicker. <laughs> and, uh, you know, can give them a time. You know, it's a very simple joy of cooking scallops. Um, <laughs> when you're cooking them, you're happy. They're scallops. I love cooking scallops. I don't know if it's noticeable, but, you know, I love cooking fish. I love cooking, like, halibut and salmon and all that jazz. But scallops, scallops are special. You know, they're, they're, just, they're just a special cook. And uh, I really love them. Also another thing with scallops is that um, you can cook them either a bit firmer than perfect because uh, some people really don't like how squishy they get. So you can give them a little bit of blue away with over, especially if you're new to scallops. Their texture of a rare scallop um, or medium rare scallop can be a little off-putting, <laughs> but um, I personally like to cook them a little bit rarer for myself. I think. Um, I'm going to try and flip one of my scallops here. Oh, nice. Now another thing that Thomas Keller says about pan these scallops is that you want to use a stainless steel pan that is sticky because it will help them get a nice caramelization on them. I don't know if you guys can see, but you can see that nice crispiness on them, a nice caramelization. I see how like um, kind of crispy it is and kind of how the muscles reacted and the cooking through the strains of the scallop muscle. Um, this is kind of what he recommends because they stick to the bottom and when they stick to the bottom they get a harder sear as opposed to when you would use a non-stick pan. Also, you know, I'm using pan, or I love this pan. Uh, it's a really good, really good pan. Um, it's this nice all-clad copper core pan. I just don't freak it out I got one because I mean, it's pretty really cool. Uh, so. <laughs> the smell of cooking scallops. Hey guys, so I decided to check the, the cookbook and make sure I was following the recipe. And uh, I came across this photo of the cooked scallops finished. And uh, I thought it'd be kind of funny. Compare them to my scallops. <laughs> this looks awkward, it is. But um, you can see, they're looking great. And uh, that's one of the things that I love about this cookbook, that you can really tell when you're doing the right thing. <laughs> kind of funny, you know, chef moment when your scallops look just like Thomas Keller's <laughs> in the book. <laughs> Alrighty, so um, I'm pretty sure my scallops are done now, so I'm just going to pull them off, flip them, yeah, perfect. Very last one, and then like this one, like that. So, here we have our three sea scallops, I'm going to give them a little bit. And hit them with the pepper, you know, just a little bit of seasoning. We don't need to hit them with the salt because we fried them, and that's um, kind of an interesting thing. But I do think that they would benefit from a little bit of pepper. Also, you know, some basic seasoning never hurts. So now it's time to see the inside of the scalp. So I think I'm gonna go with this one.
And here is the inside of the scallop. Um, you can see it's pretty nice, slightly translucent in the center. Um, you know, just kind of right cook. Um, I really tried to make sure that both sides got caramelized nicely, and you can see that on the top and the bottom. And um, that's how to try. So there you go. Man, I'm gonna be honest here. I do not think the frying in the scallop would be nice, but this is phenomenal. This is really good. I mean, the scallops themselves are incredible ingredients, and it's just like impossible to mess them up. Well, it's not impossible because you can overcook them and turn them into rubber bullets, but um, You know, there's just so much about that I can't explain to you. And you know, that's why I picked this recipe from Ad Hoc at Home with Thomas Keller, because, you know, it's something so simple, it's so hard to improve upon, the pan seared scallop. Yet Thomas Keller managed to do just that. And so that's why I chose it. So, you know, pick up a copy of Ad Hoc at Home. It's a really pretty good book. Got a lot of really good recipes. And also check out the King Shang Cutlery Knives with Thomas Keller. Uh, it's got a little signature and a little pin hole, or a little pin. Um, and Thomas Keller's signature there. I mean, they're great knives, super sharp. As you can tell, I've been using this one quite a bit. Um, so, you know, I put all my knives through a rigorous use. <laughs> and this one's still really sharp, and it still has a great line. So, I'll catch you guys on the flip side, and now I'm going to have lunch, because 